Well, with us now, Professor Bob Watson, whom you saw in that report. He's the Chief Scientific Advisor to DEFRA and Professor of Environmental Sciences at East Anglia. We're joined from central London by Professor Fred Singer from the University of Virginia. This looks bad, doesn't it, when scientists are using words like trick and hiding things. It looks bad. You agree there? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. It's just the use of language was very, very loose. And the word trick almost implies to some people we're trying to fool them. In reality, it's a, a mathematical approach to how to analyse very complex well, data. Well, then why use that kind of language? This was an ex email exchange between fellow scientists. And I think it was just very loose language. And I think those scientists will indeed remember in the future not to be so loose in their use of the English language. Professor Singer, I hope you can hear us all right there in central London, but I mean, I went on this website and trawled through all these emails. I found it very hard to find anything interesting, let alone anything controversial. You've picked out one or two well, words out of, out of context completely, haven't you? Well, to us, the basic issue is to decide the cause of climate change. Is it man-made or is it natural? And that will determine the policy. And this can only be decided on the basis of evidence. You have to look at the data. The models are useless because the models uh, all predict the same thing. The models are too simple. They cannot capture the real complexity of the atmosphere. So when, so you... when we look at the yeah, go on. When we look at the actual evidence, we conclude that the cause of climate change is primarily natural. Uh, of course, there must be some human effect, but it's too small to be noticed. It's insignificant. And this has important policy consequences. OK, let's stick... It means... Let's, hang on a second. I want to stick specifically to the question of, of these emails and the sort of language that's being used, because it also may reveal something else. May it not, Professor Watson, which is that scientists are simply rather naive about the way the public treats what they say. I don't think so. I don't think the public is naive. I think it's our job as scientists to explain what we know and what we don't know. Well, then These don't use words like trick and hide. I know. I think this is a, 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 an exchange of emails between fellow scientists. And what they're looking at is, in that particular case, is how did they take the thousand-year record of indirect proxy data and mix and match it with what we call real observations of the thermometer record? And it's a complex issue of how you bring totally different types of data sets together and yes, they were, used the word trick as a, an expression of a mathematical approach to bring in something that's quite divergent in type of information together. Clearly, uh, they need to sort of think through how to express the English language much clearer. Because you're absolutely right, I think the public could look at that email and say, we're being fooled. Professor Singer, do you see well, this... If you're, talking about, uh, if you're talking about the issue at, uh, the at East Anglia University, that's a very sad story. It really is tragic, I think. It means that as a result of this, uh, the public is going to lose confidence in science. Science will be hurt. And inevitably, all of us will suffer. Now, I must tell you that I have a little bit of personal sympathy for the people involved, because they've worked very hard for very long to do a job. However, I don't condone what they've done, uh, which is to try to evade any criticism, to hide their data, uh, uh, to, to keep from being uh, uh, contradicted. In other words, uh, they've done everything possible in order to uh, stop any kind of criticism. That's not how science works. That's, that's terrible. That's a very serious accusation. It's a very what? serious accusation. First, they don't own all the data. They're trying to make it available so all other scientists can analyse it. But this data is actually owned by the meteorological offices around the world. Today, they're trying to get permission well, to release all the data. But independent of this particular well, I data... I don't, it, I don't agree. Independent of this particular I, data I think, set... I think, I think we must have Fred, an investigation... Fred, it, Fred, we must have a proper investigation and establish exactly what happened. Okay, I that's can't fair enough. Accept but, the fact. All right, you, yeah, hang on a second, hang uh, Professor Singer. 
it's a fair enough call to have an investigation to establish what happened, isn't I it? I agree completely. We should try an investigation of how is it illegally hacked into, and then a complete, and a complete, and a complete disclosure of all the information, right. so we can see was it appropriate analysis of the data or not. Secondly, the point is there are independent data sets in the United States, both in NASA and in NOAA, that show exactly the same trends okay. as this information. Professor Singer, you can briefly have the last word. Well, I'm not arguing about the details of what they show. I'm actually arguing about their actions, which have been to, to try to prevent anyone from having access to the data, to counteract the Freedom of Information Act, and to do various things that are contrary to the way science operates. They okay. have contradicted the principle of openness and transparency. I think it's up to the British authorities, because this is... Uh, an operation supported by British tax money. Right. It's really not my business. Okay, all right. In that case, I think we'll leave it there. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.